All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Live with John Cogby, but this is not John here. <laughs> this is Ethel. Unfortunately, John couldn't join us today, but he's with us. He's thinking about today's session. And today also we are privileged to have once again our very own brand ambassador, Rafael Zicaleni, all the way from Italy. Um, Hello. Today's session is special, not only because Rafael will take us on a journey on colors as he take us to a demo um, showing his beautiful, unique mixes for seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. But just before that, uh, Rafael has prepared something for us. A little treat, maybe. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We, are, we will be speaking about uh, color triads. But I, I would like to show the, the new gouache mm -hmm. by Daniel Smith. And uh, these are two samples made, okay. made, on, the, made on hemp paper, very rough, made in Fabriano. And uh, this is uh, how I can learning again to to work with uh, gouache after 50 years or so. <laughs> I, I was at school when I, when I used gouache. Um, and uh, I, I find it is very, very funny for me to work with so many colors uh, because I, I haven't yet figured out how to, how to work uh, in triads with gouache. Uh, because working with um, with opaque uh, paint uh, make, makes you think uh, of putting uh, bright colors or, or dark colors, but bright what you normally don't do with in watercolor, and you can put some um, bright accents here and there. So it is very useful for me to work on a uh, toned paper, let's say paper or hand paper, that kind of color, which is a uh, very, very dark buff. And, uh, and it, it's easy to, to, to put uh, the bright colors over the, over the, the dark colors, which is, of, uh, of course, is the country uh, that we are always doing uh, uh, in watercolor. But so, so this is very, very, very funny. I, I'm getting accustomed to, to show off the, the little details um, by the end with the with body, what is in fact a body color, like this, like this, mm -hmm. or, or painting um, clouds when you usually don't paint clouds uh, on paper with watercolor, you, you, are, you only leave the, the paper white. So very, very interesting. I, I will work on, on this a lot uh, next times. Thank you, Raffaele, for showing your um, artworks using gouache. Uh, but today, Raffaele will, will do a demo on seasons, the four seasons using watercolor. In fact, in front of us, he's already prepared, he has prepared his, um, these are the triads, four different sets of triads that he uses for four different seasons. And as mentioned earlier, just before he starts the demo, Raffaele has prepared um, a one-liner song. No, not, it's not one-liner song. <laughs> um, you're gonna play something for us. You ready with your guitar, Raffaele? Now? Yes. Yes. Really? Bye bye. Bravo. Bravo. Let's put our hands together for Raffaele. Amazing, Raffaele. Yay. <laughs> I had three three songs ready with uh, <laughs> with uh, with Daniel Smith wor uh, words. One wow. is yeah. Oops. Oops. We have to disable the audio of the other. Okay, let's try this time. Yeah. Well, I I didn't open the 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 audio. What? Um, 
the 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 song we read with Edel was uh, speaking speaking about uh, um, color triads uh, based on seasons, uh, like I will show you then. Uh, so the song was obvious, obviously was uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall uh, in music, and then in uh, in color. Mm -hmm. Spring, summer, winter, and fall. Keep the world in view. Spinning round like a ball. Painted red, yellow, and blue. Stop. <laughs> what a beautiful way to segue amazing Rafaela. then there then there is another idea is the uh, cobalt blue is the color of my true love's eyes and it's cobalt blue not blue not normal blue but cobalt blue and another one will be uh, blackbird which is uh, which uh, will uh, become pigment black 11s instead of a blackbird but another time, yes, I have everything almost ready. But now too long, to, too long to play now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Raffaele. Um, just before uh, we start the demo, um, in case you have questions, we have Anna Marie and Gabriel, who could help us field questions from Facebook chat. And of course, in Zoom, if you want to speak, just help kindly unmute your mic. Um, I think we can just quickly show Rafael's social handles and some of his sample artworks, um, especially for those who just tune in. Rafael, you will just do um, a share screen for, for your artworks. And we want everybody to follow your socials right after, or even as we have the session today. This will be quick. Do we all see this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yes, our, our Raffaele, our dear brand ambassador Raffaele is from Italy. And this is his Instagram account. It's his name, first name and last name, Raffaele Sicaleni. Um, no, that's not YouTube. It's his Facebook account. Yes. Also his name. And we have gathered here around five sample artworks, Raffaele. It would be good if you could just share a line or two about each of these artworks. We start with this one. Beautiful. Do you want to share something about this artwork? Where is this painting, Raffaele? Yes. This is the, Where is the, the, real, the real one. Oh, the one that he's um, showing on the other camera. Yeah. But where? What a nice, what a nice composition, Rafael. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Love the brush stroke and the colors. Yeah, colors, brush stroke, composition is so beautiful, amazing. Yeah. Even the palette is very nice. Mm -hmm. You yeah, see yeah. the color, yeah, the range of colors is being used. It's very matured colors. Yes, thank you. Uh, real, uh, real master. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I did this uh, during a workshop of mine, just uh, showing it, it is an almost an imaginary landscape uh, that was uh, launched by by a student, and I did it uh, while standing five minutes, and uh, it shows. It, uh, very very great granulation that was not on purpose but uh, it happened uh, I, I don't remember exactly the the, the colors but uh, any, I think they they are what I, I'm showing in some minutes mm -hmm. my my thought is uh, how how is it that I, I use different palettes and uh, very often I I get the same colors that um, the same colors um, 
with different using different palettes. Uh, so I, I think uh, it depends on uh, on the on the search you 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 are making. Um, it depends on on the colors you have in, in, in your mind, heart, uh, in your sensibility, and um, what what comes out is uh, uh, almost the same uh, the same chromatic effect, uh, but using very uh, very different palettes, and uh, very often I'm using triads. It is a, a long story with the. Uh, with triads, uh, I, I began about uh, 30 year, years ago or so, and um, I am I am preparing a, a book on this, um, on uh, why using triads, uh, why it is far fun to to use triads, and uh, how many um, how many working habits you can have uh, while working with uh, with triads. So we can see uh, normal triads, which is a yellow, or, uh, a red, and a blue. But it depends on what you uh, what you think about uh, uh, yellow, uh, red, and blue. We can use uh, uh, very the, the primary colors like uh, lemon yellow or riolin or queen agridon rose, for example. This is my my primary uh, triad. I use Oriolin as a yellow, uh, Queen Acridon Rose as a red, and uh, Cobalt or Verditer as a, as a primary blue. This one, Cobalt or or Verditer, which is a little greener, greenish. Uh, tonight, I I am thinking uh, of, of showing uh, the spring palette, a possible spring palette, uh, which is it could be uh, aureolin, fire gold ochre, and cerulean blue, because all, uh, all when you think about the triad, uh, it's all about thinking what is my uh, if, if I am working in plein air, of course, but, but also in the studio, um, which, uh, what is the, the dominant color I am seeing? And uh, what, what is the, um, the main color, the main uh, hue I, I want to portray, I want to, I want to paint? So it, sometimes it, it can depend on, on the yellow range, sometimes it can depend on the, on the red range, Sometimes it can depend on the on the blue range. Very important in a triad is: uh, Do I have uh, greens in my subject? If I have greens, I must think of uh, uh, a yellow and a blue that can do a very good service for uh, for mixing, like this, for example. This is nickel as a yellow. English red earth and cerulean blue. And another aspect of, uh, of the triad is using only one, using two at a time. Or very interesting for having a very restricted palette is to have a triad plus one. A triad plus one is very, very interesting because you can have uh, some all rounder, especially in the in the gray range, the neutral range. So you can, for example, use this spring palette, one, two, and three, and you can have a, a mixer. Let's uh, let's call it a mixer, which can be a granulating color. So so you can add. Uh, I normally use bloodstone genuine, which is. Uh, almost neutral gray, very granulating, very, uh, homo, um, I don't know how to say in English, um, homogeneous granul granulation. But I can use lunar black, which is unpredictable. And uh, if I need some warmer granulation, I can use lunar earth, which is exactly as uh, 
uh, unpredictable as lunar black is. Plaston is more regular, let's say. Uh, so um, I, I, I told, uh, the, and on any triad, you can use the three colors, nickel azo, English red, and cerulean blue, and you can add another color, uh, which can be in the range of blues, in the range of red, or in the range of yellows. Most, uh, most useful is having two blues for landscape, but it depends. Um, so when we are using uh, a spring palette, like, like the first I showed you before, a Riolin, Fire, Gold Ochre, and Cerulean Blue, uh, one could add uh, or, or change. You can change, for instance, Cerulean Blue with the new King's, uh, Ro King's Royal Blue, one of the, uh, of the new colors, or you can use the most, let's say, normal Cobalt Blue, which is uh, less greenish than Cerulean, if you want a a warmer greens, you can use cobalt turquoise. Uh, if you want a, a normal red, you can <coughs> change the fire gold poker with queen rose. So this, almost all this color give very, very bright colors. I made, uh, uh, this afternoon, I made a um, spring version of uh, of the one I showed before. This was, this is what you saw before. And this is what I did today. And this is very, as you, as you can see, if you compare, it is very, very uh, brighter, brighter. And uh, I didn't use any, any natural gray or dark color here. So I used, uh, I can show you the three colors I used before. Uh, this is a chrome, chrome titanate yellow, which is a pigment brow 24, this one, which looks a little, uh, like um, Naples yellow, a little more strong and uh, um, a little more, a little more earthy than Naples yellow. Then uh, I used um, fire. Uh, no, I used burnt sienna light. Which, which is the the red the. Um, reddest um, Siena in, in the in Daniel Smith range, I suppose, apart from Queen Agredons, of course. And, uh, and I use Verditer Blue. Well, if, if you use these colors in, in a landscape, you will, you will not have been a very, very, very dark uh, gray color, which, uh, uh, which is the, um, what you get mixing all three colors. And it's, it's difficult to, to get the, the balance of this. This is the darkest dark you can have with, with, the, with this triad. So you, you may want to, uh, to use, for instance, uh, Bloodstone. With Bloodstone, you can, you can get everything much darker, but I didn't use it here. So, so you, you only see uh, the result of the mixes with th only three colors, uh, chrome titanate yellow, burnt sienna light, and verditer blue. Okay. Um, this is for uh, spring palette. 
for uh, summer palette, uh, I would uh, suggest to use uh, chrome titanate yellow. Uh, well, what, what I said before, chrome titanate yellow, burnt, burnt sienna light and burnt it in blue. Well, this is summer, sorry. This is the summer palette. If uh, the other is the spring, the spring palette, I can show you the mixes if you like. No, I go, I go on. Then there is the, the fall autumn palette, which is my my traditional, my classic that I, I would say, which is Monte Amiata Natural Siena, Italian burnt Siena, which is much uh, very less red than the normal burnt Siena, which is almost a brown, and French ultramarine. Uh, on this palette, uh, on this fall palette, you can change or add as a split trial nickel azo yellow, which which makes Monte Amiata more yellowish. So this is a, a split palette. Could be nickel azo yellow, Monte Amiata natural sienna, both uh, Italian burnt sienna and French ultramarine, which is almost what I did here. Here you can see very, very little, very little red or burnt sienna, but much blue um, and, uh, and uh, Monte Miata natural sienna. Oh, I forgot to say, if you, uh, one chose to, um, to use the, the summer palette, um, alternative color, or a split palette could be this other I have on the right. For instance, if you want a, a fiery, uh, bright and hot colors, you can use uh, Aussie red gold, quinacridon sienna and the phthalo blue red shade or uh, more red. Uh, again, you can use uh, uh, or split Bordeaux uh, or Queen Acridon burnt orange. So the base is this is this one, and you can add one of, of these in a in a range if you want a split palette. Oh, for winter, I I have chosen to use uh, goethite uh, brown ochre, which is very very muted yellow. Uh, Piemontite genuine with this very dark red brown and uh, sodalite genuine. This makes uh, uh, for very, uh, very dark uh, and, uh, and muted mixes. Uh, so, Rafael, the... if I may ask before getting, if before doing any painting, do you make this color chart before? Then you get yes, into yes, the yes, I prepared yesterday. Yes. Okay. If you if you want to if you want then to to see real mixes, I I can do in a moment. And uh, this uh, wintry palette can be splitted in the red range together with Piemontite. You can add the burgundy red poker, which is very 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 fine colors, uh, which is in the middle between burnt sienna and burnt amber. Uh, you can change or split with Indian throne blue with southern light, which is very, it is a very subtle, a subtle difference, but there is difference. And you can may have a red a reddish uh, mixes. If you mix, uh, if you split the red uh, with Piemontite and lunar red rock or Indian red. So these are the, my suggested palettes for now. Spring, summer, uh, fall, winter. I had um, one problem is I can't have a very good uh, green when I use uh, a triad one could say. So uh, if you use a triad, you can, you are not compelled to use a pure triad. So if, if you really need, I, 
I have these, uh, these greens. I wrote with a little help from green friends that can be um, united to the, to the, to the, the triad. So the triad. So I, if if I really need, I, I find uh, I need a, a very a very a green. That you can call a very uh, a real green. Uh, one could add uh, one of these greens to to the triad. It is no more a triad, of course. But if, if you need, you you can, of course. So I, I normally use serpentine, genuine. Or uh, more muted green apatite genuine, with, uh, which granulates beautifully. Um, olive green, the traditional cascade green, which everybody uses, I see. Or jadeite green, which is um, very phthalo-ish green. All, uh, all are granulating colors or are splitting colors like cascade green, which is another, another story, uh, which John uh, spoke many times about. Uh, I also would like to, to suggest uh, what I call misty sunset or misty sunrise, which can be the, um, the sparkling colors, uh, which are bronzite genuine. I don't know if, if you can see the spark in the, in the camera. Bronzite Genuine, the new uh, iridescent vibrant raspberry, this one. One of the, of the new colors. And the uh, Kyanite Genuine, which is uh, sparkling also, and is very muted uh, blue, gray blue color. Very similar to uh, to blue appetite genuine, but kyanite, kyanite is sparkling. This I would call misty sunset. I will I will try to um, to put uh, um, this uh, this triad uh, working in the next days. And uh, another is uh, what I can call misty sunrise, which is Naples yellow, which is very a little more less earthy than chrome titanite yellow, the classic Naples yellow, wisteria, using wisteria for red, and uh, lavender using it for blue. Also, this triad gives very, very muted grays and no dark, almost no dark at all. So for, um, sometimes I have used in the past Naples yellow, wisteria, Lavender, uh, adding French ultra, French ultramarine. And somebody told me, but this is not a triad. Well, it is a split triad. I have one yellow, one uh, red, I have one blue, and I have one stronger blue, useful to make darker colors. Rafael, I have a question. Yes. I, I really see how much. Uh, you use also semi-transparent um, colors or a yes. semi-opaque, and I like I like that. I always like the the uh, between the transparency and semi-opaque, uh, and with the mixing, that is interesting. But that is, of course, how much you dilute them and them to how much attention do you pay to transparency? Um. Well, it, it depends mostly on uh, on hue because if you if you see well, uh, the new one, the chrome titanite is uh, mostly opaque, uh, right. mostly opaque. Naples yellow also right. is opaque. Yes, and we still all the colors that have white in them. Um, but I, I I prefer pure watercolor, so I only use the opaque colors when. Uh, when it depends on you, uh, because if you, when you choose to work on a, on a certain palette, uh, you should uh, always think. Uh, I will try to to have three three colors because the fun is working with uh, restricting colors, uh, 
uh, and and uh, what is fine in having uh, so many colors in the Danny Smith range, for instance, is that you can uh, you have so many colors and you can arrange as many palettes as you as you as you like. But then the fun is going uh, going in the in the narrow narrower range. In, in my opinion, <laughs> uh, so. Um, Raphael. Yes, moment. One uh, should choose. One should choose. Sorry, we'll choose uh, what is uh, if you want all transparent colors, or or if you want one only one opaque colors color, and uh, what uh, what color is cool or warm? So uh, so you must decide before starting to paint. Uh, what is the what are or what is the the cool color and what is the, the warmer color? This, uh, of course, in in every in every range. So if you use blue, of course, blue is a, is a, a cool color. But French ultramarine is on the on the red side. So so we call it a warm blue. Uh, normally, the red. Uh, for landscape is a warm color, but you can also use uh, Bordeaux, for example. And uh, in in the yellow range, mostly you can have the, the stronger difference. So you can have uh, Riolin, which is very cool, um, nickel azo yellow, which which is almost a medium color for me. You can use uh, uh, quinacridone yellow, which is uh, when it is very diluted, it is cooler. When it is in a mass tone, quinacridone gold is, uh, is reddish. And, uh, or you, uh, you can have a, a very muted uh, light, uh, light brown color, like uh, natural sienna. And you can have a brownish yellow, like, like uh, uh, goethite, for example, or bronzite or tiger's eye, genuine. So, um, so for me, it's it's not important what uh, what is uh, more or less trans transparent, but uh, I I try to put together uh, colors that allow me to have a, a warmer side and a, and a cooler a cooler side. Yeah, Another, thank you, Emily. Yes. That is really what um, you show it is how important it is for us to know the colors and to know what they do and that that is what all the sessions with John are about uh, learning about the colors and know your colors and your and the palette. Yes, yes. Thank of you. I, I see that somebody asked uh, if, if I bring all my colors when I go out painting. Am I wrong? Sì, ti hanno chiesto se sì. dipingi in plein air e se, che tipi sì. di colori usi, se usi sì. i tubi, se ti porti i tubi appresso. I am uh, most always using uh, tube color, but I, I normally bring uh, a palette like this, a box like this, and uh, I squeeze color on, um, on most only on, um, on, large, on large pans the whole pants. And sometimes I also bring the, the half pants like this. So when, when I go out, I, I bring this box, let's say. Not, not, not so many, not so many. If, if I know where I'm going, I can decide what colors I can bring uh, me, but I can bring uh, all, the, all the pants and put it on the, on the box only which I, which, uh, what I think I will use like this. Okay, altra domanda, hai mai scelto la triade basata sulla granulazione? Um, yes, uh, yes, um, one, one granulating uh, triad is, can be uh, sodalite genuine for blue, piemontite genuine for red, brown, and the tiger's eye genuine, which is very good. Not so much, it is not very big yellow, but it is very much granulating. Or 
bronzite use, uh, used as a, as a yellow. Uh, you must, you should, this one should decide what, uh, what is a yellow for me, what is a red for me, what is a blue for me, and uh, this will give uh, a, a very great range of uh, colors. Like this. This is sketchbook. This is fire gold, gold ochre. And um, if I remember well, uh, rose sienna and cobalt blue. Quanta importanza dai ai colori eh, che non hanno un pigmento solo? Molti, de, molti dei tuoi mix eh, hanno, hanno più, più pigmenti. È tanto importante avere pigmento singolo? Uh, yes and no. Um, having um, in the past years, uh, it was a trend, you know, uh, so everybody thought having a, a mono pigment color is a must. But I think, I don't think so now. Uh, of course, if you want the purest mixes, you, you, use, you will use uh, the, the single pigment color. But sometimes it is impossible. For instance, if, if I want to use a blue, which is, which is not cobalt, for some reasons, and uh, and it must be very bright. And on the on the greener side, I, I will use verdigris blue. Verdigris blue is is three colors. In fact, is uh, is uh, if I am not wrong, is cobalt blue is um, uh, pigment green thirty six. If I remember well, so in on the greener side and white. So if if you and uh, if you have the white prepared by John in a in a color, you you will not see any any white. So so being a purist has no sense for me. If you want Naples yellow, uh, you must have a white. If you want wisteria, which, which I don't use so much, you must have white. And this is this was very trendy in the, the past years. Lavender, you must have a color which has white in it. And also the, the new King's Royal Blue, which is in, in very not um, good for mixing because this uh, very beautiful color by itself and it has white also. So uh, the, the, the normal answer is it depends. It can be unpleasant, but it depends, <laughs> really, it, it depends. Uh, for this one for it, uh, this one for is uh, rosy and light, uh, ultramarine blue. This was made with uh, with half pans contained in the in, in this box, if I remember well, or or maybe in the fifteen uh, ultimate uh, plastic box. Don't remember. Uh, this is rosy and light. Uh, ultramarine blue, not French ultramarine, and um, under green, under sea, under sea green, which is uh, ultramarine. Uh, so this is very, very pale, very coolish, uh, practically no, no, no red. It is, it is a palette of a yellow, a blue, and a, and a green only. Uh, this one is uh, on the same page. This one is rose and light, Indian red, which is very, very dark red, brownish red, and ultramarine blue. So when I think about uh, uh, working in triad, I, I think about this page. Uh, this is almost the same place. This was in the afternoon. Uh, well, it was September. By the end of September, it was two years two years ago, uh, this was in the in the afternoon early, and it was uh, at uh, sunset almost. So it it is a challenge with yourself. You you want to por to portray uh, a landscape. Uh, you want to uh, to make it real. Uh, in different light conditions, which is uh, 
the normal condition for, for planar, and you will uh, get to very different modes. Well, this is this uh, the, the the triad is a mood. When you use uh, three more traditional colors, it is uh, Monte Amiata Natural Siena, Venetian Red, and uh, Cobalt Blue. If it's, yes, and Cobalt Blue. Almost in the same place, uh, in the same period, September, two years ago. If you have different, if you have very different colors, you can have a, a wider range of, uh, of course, of diluted, diluting colors and uh, of darks. And sometimes you have almost more dark here, or like here also. Raphael. Yes. On your chart with the sunset mist and the sunrise mist, what green would you use with those? With, with this painting? And the sea green, he said. The chart. The chart. Uh, well, I I have not used chart with the triad. Manelakeda. Let's get that. Yeah. Which? On this one? Yes, yes. The one yeah. right there with the name area in lavender. Which green would you use with those three? Uh, and the one, lavender. One. Yeah. Yes, I, I prepared. Yes, the I was getting together all the colors. And uh, it came yesterday to my mind. Uh, a good, a, a strange for me palette could be this one. If you want, I will show you. Posso farti un'altra domanda? Sì. Chiedono se usi l'ottalo blu red shade qualche volta nella triade. Sometimes, but very seldom, because it, it's too strong color for me. I I'm, I think I will use, uh, I, I have used in the past uh, Russian blue very much. Then uh, I used also, of course, uh, Ftelo blues, mostly red shade because uh, the green shade is, is too too strong for me and too, too greenish. And I, I, I can use Ftelo blue red shade, but I, I don't like Ftelos very much. I think I will uh, I will use in the in the future Prussian blue, which is very 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 good in the Daniel Smith range, or uh, in the Tron blue, which I use very much. So uh, for um, for Daniel, this is Naples yellow. This is a very bright palette with. Uh, um, opaque colors, uh, apples yellow, wisteria, lavender, and uh, as you can see, they are very, very fine of these four together. Yes, they are. What is that? Uh, one student told me, uh, asked me one time, this look like um, chewing gum. <laughs> no, Naples yellow, wisteria, and uh, and lavender look uh, look a little like 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 real chewing gum. In like ice cream. Yeah, yes, <laughs> and um, I think uh, a, a, a green that can be very good mixing with mixed That's with uh, this triad is. Serpent, serpentine or serpentine, I don't know how to oh, pronounce serpentine. it. Oh. Serpentine with the E or serpentine. <laughs> However uh, you like it. <laughs> well, uh, so serpentine uh, for normal English. I don't know if it is correct. <laughs> uh. serpentine. Because I heard some, somebody say serpentine. Well, okay. Uh, these are the um, chewing gum, bubble, bubble gum colors. <laughs> no? 
and uh, it can be also interesting to, to see what uh, what happens if you mix the the three colors together you see very weak very weak uh, mix no dark at all you you can also go with with mass tone but you 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 don't get a, a real dark but nice gray though Yes, a very, a very, very, very muted gray. Yes, muted very, stuff. Very interesting, oh. but no dark. But mm. no dark. It, it, it uh, wears uh, towards a, a buff titanium. Mm. Uh, and uh, I will try for the first time to, to put a serpentine green here. And it, it could uh, turn out to be a very, very muted gray gray green interesting so it uh, everything comes to knowing the the your colors and play with them exploring them and in yes, really learning course. about it that is yes. wonderful you're showing this Rafael, because that is a that is wonderful thing to oh, with all this beautiful daniel Smith colors to play with them and know them. Thank you. I, I, I have always been a, a color holic. I, uh, how English people say. Uh, so I, I, I am very much on the on the harmony side of things. If I, if I listen to a song, it, it is not the melody which uh, lights my mind, but uh, but the harmony. So, yeah. so, so the, 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 the melody is not, which can be the, the design, the drawing, uh, is not much, it's not my, doesn't matter so much to me, but I, I prefer to, to hear or to see the, the harmony of the, of the whole thing. So, uh, so in, in the colors is how, how to mix, what colors you mix, and of course you must know very well the colors, and uh, uh, you should know very well the colors and you should uh, think and, and try, of course. Uh, you can experiment uh, widely, but you can study before you go out painting and, and you will know what mixes come, can come out of, of this particular uh, trial. Then the, fun, the, the, the fun is trying to get the, the feeling of the moment and the feeling of, of, the, of the real colors using the, using the palette that, that you choose. So and you can bring the- doing Beautifully, catching the moment. You, you, you catch yes. it so beautifully and emotionally. I love that. And if yes. you get the harmony, then you have the melody. So that is, yeah. you know, that is how it yes. works. In fact, in fact, but it is not very much an, uh, an, an emotional matter. It's, uh, um, um, it's creating, uh, creating an, an, an emotion uh, while using some particular peculiar uh, colors and and the mix of, of peculiar peculiar colors. That that I I, I don't care if the, the looker as motions, as uh, the, the reaction is of the, uh, of the looker. Um, uh, and I, I don't care, it is not my, it is not my thing. But my, my thing is, uh, is working, is, is making some, something that, that didn't exist before I paint. Then you look, then you decide if you like, if you have an emotion, yes, hopefully. And if you have not an emotion, uh, <laughs> you, it's you that decide. <laughs> you care or not, they are emotional because you really catch the moment, a, a fleeting moment, and that brings yeah. emotion. So you care or not, it is there. Yes, yes, yes. How is this? Because uh, everybody now speaks about emotions, emotions, emotions. Uh, I get a, a little tired about this kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> way of seeing us, let's say. But of course, everybody is free to think. Of course. 
so if uh, if you have some minutes, uh, I can uh, do uh, a quick sketch of the subject. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, uh, Yes. Great. Can we and, uh, see the the sunrise misty uh, in a no, in a picture? No, we were <laughs> we planned before with Ethel to to, to have uh, uh, the wintry palette. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be more sessions. I, I have some, but I didn't prepare it. I have in some sketchbooks of mine. This uh, this uh, Sarah Misty Sarah is uh, Michael. I, I will show you in private <laughs> if you really like. <laughs> but I also show John in in another in another online live some time ago. Anyway, Michael, I will uh, I will send you. Hmm? Okay. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> uh, sorry, Gabriel. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, uh, so um, let's try to do a very, very muted, wintry uh, landscape. This, the subject, for, for, for what it's worth, this is the subject. And uh, I, I will mix um, soda light. So the light blue. If you want more wintry, you can charge a little. This is what I like in so the light and in the ground also. You can get very, 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 very white and bright, let's say bright uh, blues. And you can have the, <coughs> the heavier clouds. And they have the heavier they are, the bluer they are. Then we can make this uh, mountain. And uh, I use um, goethite, brown ochre. I am mixing this brown ochre with a little chemontite genuine, which is uh, brown with a, with a reddish undertone. This is a um, square. Um, Well, I'm glad we didn't uh, spoke uh, almost uh, at all about brushes, because everybody uh, uh, normally wants to know which brushes. <laughs> so this is this is a uh, square mod. Okay, I uh, I want to to have the, um, this misty top of the mountain. This is, um, this will be my yellowish, the, 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 the most yellow I can have in a, this trial, this one. No yellower than this. Go with that brown oak. I can mix this uh, goitite with, uh, of course, with, um, with goitite. I, I will have a very, very muted green. Let's say green, which is this. <clears throat> this is um, soda light again, almost, almost pure. This is goethe again. Uh, 
so the light. I'm working very, very quickly, so uh, I don't care about the rooms and uh, and so on. And this matter, well, fine, uh, everything is good. And I didn't mix uh, till now. Until now, diamondite and so the light for having the gray. This one, the grayish. Uh, Neutral. Well, everything is neutral here, but this is uh, instead of the uh, burnt sienna and French ultramarine. And you see, this is very beautiful uh, granulating, of course, very beautiful mix. Yeah. Are you still in town? I will put the foreground is grassy, so uh, I begin with yellow. Brown ochre. I'm going with a smaller brush. This is a very fine brush. It is a Da Vinci Harbin Kolinsky. I like it very much. Very, very, very great point. So mixing dark some dark accents you see that piemontite it's it's red if, if you if you compare with with neutrals this is it's a wonderful green. color yes almost almost uh, red very similar to to indian red uh, with very very good granulation then I can use my my preferred brush, which is this one. Well, I don't don't remember all all the all the peculiarities of this uh, of this original landscape. But I can add now. What do you call that fan brush? A mosquito? <laughs> I, I called in a very strange Italian, old the Renaissance Italian name, uh, adjective, which is Scraus. It doesn't exist in English, of course. It's a uh, butter down, butter down uh, brush, which helps to, 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 um, Think not of uh, of of a brush, but mostly like a, a wood stick or or the nails. See, well, it is not. Um, this is a very good brush, very polite, you know, very traditional. <laughs> and this is a brush that goes by itself. I I prefer this one. When is the time? Of course, I I can do washes, of course, without the mop. But when I, I go to, to calligraphy, let's say, this is uh, very, very good because you, you are not concerned about uh, a very good calligraphy, very, very, very good, uh, uh, you know, it, it's more stylish for me. And you can have, you can turn it in a very- What you're saying way. is you prefer that instead of a round, Rigger instead of rigger. Yes, I also use a rigger sometimes. This one, this is a Da Vinci also, Maestro. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you use, you see, if you use a rigger, you have uh, your hand. You show uh, your your hand, your your way of, of writing or, or drawing. Well, Control. which can be, which can be good, of course. But you can keep it this way, very, very far from the, from the point. Uh, but uh, it is it is a brush. Uh, this is this is not a brush. This is uh, uh, like a wood stick, let's say. And this this brush helps you to be more confident. More you can risk very much, of course, much more. Uh, but but you, it is real fun. 
to lose the control. Yes. Have you tried their... Uh, it is almost like when you when have you, you tried know, to sign your painting with a straws brush. <laughs> Chinese, Chinese. Uh, I have Chinese paints, uh, brushes, but uh, they are not quite uh, quite the same. This is the difference uh, between this and this is that we, when you use this, you are using a pencil. When uh, you are using <laughs> I think we could make you one with the uh, pen and the uh, uh, pen. He, he invented well, this. It, it's a, it's a matter of it's a it's a matter of risking, you know. You, if you accept the accept the, the risk, you are on your own. Okay. Love it. And you can think this is a sketch, of course, but uh, <clears throat> as you as you surely know, uh, the sketch uh, very often is very much better than, than the finished, say, than the finished uh, Thank work, you. Yeah. you know, the, yeah. the, the refined work with, uh, which I, I don't like very much. I, I don't feel very uh, realistic like Giovanni, <laughs> for instance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would not enjoy very much working, uh, of course, working uh, one month on a, work well it's it's my feeling of course as you see when you have mixed very very neutral colors um, when you put an accent with a, a pure color of the of the triad you will have a soda light which normally you you can consider uh, being a uh, gray, a grayish uh, blue. When you put an accent in blue, this is blue. When you put an accent in red, it is Piemontide, which is not a red, but this is red. And when you put uh, Goethite, which is not a yellow, uh, this is. Uh, when you see against uh, a neutralized color, this is a yellow. Raffaele? Yes? Do you ever use neutral tints or uh, lunar black? Yes, lunar black very much. Neutral tint, no. I don't know why. Uh, I find it is very, uh, very on the violet side. So it, the name is neutral, but it, uh, for me it is not neutral. The the, the real neutral is uh, uh, in the is um, in the granulating range is um, blood sun. This is blood sun. This this is uh, so. This this is becoming a, a split triad. If I put some accents with with the blood song, I have uh, some uh, um, some darks, which I, I didn't. I didn't uh, need too much because all, all three colors that I use are very, are very, are very dark. But uh, if I need a, a really neutral uh, color, I, I would use uh, bloodstone, which I prefer to hematite because hematite is more grainy and the bloodstone can be more smooth. Let's say it's more. So this uh, this is this was uh, goethite pure. Moment, I clean goethite uh, brown ochre, piemontite, <coughs> So goethite is for. Uh, from Germany, I think. Piemontite is from Italy. And um, 
so the light, I don't know where it comes from. So this is the, this triad you can compare and a little, a little a blood sun. Of course, when this diluted is very, very granular, of course. And uh, so this can be the spring version of this subject. This was the original, mostly imaginary landscape, um, autumn. Well, it was uh, 26 October. And this is the February version with blooms, with everything you can think of, uh, of not very good and, and polite. And uh, used in these colors, of course, and using this brush, which uh, I cut this way. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Uh, this, this really is like a, a wood stick. And when when the color is uh, still um, is still wet, you can uh, indent the, the paper. Now it's almost dry, so and you can uh, if you um, if you wet a little, you can also use uh, the handle of the brush or you can use your nail to, to have whiter or, or darker lines, like here. Too late, but, <laughs> but this is not important. Yes, uh, this is the way, this is the way I usually work and, uh, and I have very much fun with this. And uh, what is unpredictable is um, this, for instance, or this. You know, almost, uh, almost, let's say, everything is alla prima, uh, which in Italian means at, at first, uh, at uh, the first, uh, I don't know how to say it, alla prima. First hand, let's say mm -hmm. first hand. First hand, and you you don't almost touch anything then. Good well, you. Thank you so yeah. much for taking us through seasons today. <laughs> That's I think in more less than an hour, you <laughs> take us to four different seasons through your colors. Everybody think enjoyed. So for the rest of us here, thank you once again for joining us on Friday Live. Thank um, you. I think we're most likely to see more of triads from Raffaele. This is definitely not the last um, session where we get to see Raffaele share about uh, triad mixing. Um, next week, please join us again on Thursday and Friday. Our guest um, artists for Friday next week will be Cindy Briggs. Um, still at the same time, no special time next week, 10.30 Pacific time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for following. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.